This week in Nerf, we've got leaks for new blasters that are actually old favorites, competitive nerfing, and some new flywheels that have some extra bite. I'm Jangular, and this is your source for first party, third party, and community nerf news every Saturday right here. Now let's get right on into it. As I said in the beginning, uh, new blaster leaks. This was a Reddit post by KDWK, and uh, this was an image of what's called the Stratohawk, and inside this Reddit post, uh, someone actually, Boris Morso2, posted a link to a Japanese blog page that found a Baidu leak, which has since been taken down, and that shared five different blasters that are coming out and getting re-releases for new versions of their former selves. Now, first off, as I mentioned, the Stratohawk, which is what I believe everybody is probably most excited for, and this is a Rapid Strike re-release. It is a repaint with more accessories, and the coolest part about this is that it is a gear-up looking paint job. That has me excited for it. Um, now, you all know that my opinion on repaints and things like that is I don't mind them. I think it's great to have variety in the way things look. So if you're upset that it's just a re-release of old blasters, I understand that. But for people that like a little bit of diversity and difference in terms of aesthetics, even if you're using the same shell, these are great. I, I like that we're getting them. I think it's cool. Uh, what's also important to note is that the Stratohawk and one of the other blasters that we'll talk about in a minute here are getting re-released under the AccuStrike line, which is very cool because that means AccuStrike darts, which are far superior to Elite darts. Way, way far and, and above and beyond better. Just better all around, easy to say. Uh, what's interesting about this as well is that the blasters, a lot of them are getting extra accessories, especially the Rapid Strike and the Strife, which we'll talk about in a moment. The Rapid Strike is getting a scope, it's getting a long barrel attachment, and it's getting a 25 dart drum. The 25 dart drum is awesome. I think that's great that it's dropping with this blaster. It's absolutely a fantastic addition. The scope and the barrel piece uh, you know, the kids may love them, the target audience may love them, but they're going to drive up the price, which is unfortunate, but to be expected for certain re-releases as we've seen, especially with, say, the Modulus Strife, getting extra attachments and costing more that a lot of us in the hobby community may not have liked. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick about this Rapid Strike or the Stratohawk re-release is, look at that stock. Look at that white. Ooh, it's so clean. It's going to look so good going on the Fabu Strike over there to match with the white on the paint job. So I'm going to pick up one of these just for that stock to cannibalize it and put it on one of my other blasters. So that's just it's those little things that really, uh, really get me. And I, I like those little details. So moving on, like I said, the other one um, that people are going to be very excited about is the Strife. This is the Strife CQ-10, which... I mean, I guess close quarters, 10. Uh, the 10 is because it looks like it's getting the Modulus 10 Dart Banana Mag, which, I mean, that's a step up from a 6 Dart Mag. I definitely give it to Hasbro on that one. Uh, the unfortunate side effect of that, though, is that we're getting one of those short stocks, a barrel attachment, and a foregrip as well. So this is probably going to cost more than even the Modulus Strife, and that's... That's disappointing because the Stripe is at its best when it's around $25 to $20. And this is going to be $30 to $35 is my guess, just based on the fact that it's got uh, three different attachments and a bigger magazine that requires more plastic. Mm, I love the Strife, but this, this one is a bit harder for me to get super excited about. I do like that it's a very clean looking paint job and there's not much deco in terms of extra stuff on it, so we're not going to see um, one side lacking more than the other too much. So this is not a bad choice for Hasbro that has liked to paint only one side of the shell in recent years. So I definitely think that is a plus. This is also just an Elite Blaster. This is not getting the AccuStrike treatment. So that's, I, I guess they just want to kind of mix things up. Uh, the other AccuStrike Blaster is going to be the Talonfire, I believe it's called. And this is a simple single shot blast, what we've seen before. Um, nothing too spectacular, but if you like if you like the shape of this and you want some different colors, that's great. It's another option, and it's using Acro Strike darts, which again, better. Uh, we're also seeing another rough cut, which is getting the battle camo. Uh, paint job to it, which means I think it would be a Walmart exclusive. I think Walmart's the only uh, company that has the battle camo 
correct me if I'm wrong, please. I'm sure someone will. But yeah, so I think this one's really cool looking. I actually really like the way this one looks. I dig it. I'm into it. I'm also a Rough Cut fan, as you can see. So I will probably pick one of these up just because it's cool looking and add it to the, the Rough Cut family. So I think this one's cool. This one's also the, in the Elite line. And the last one that we've got is the Sure Strike, which is the old Dart Tag pistol that we've all seen that has a really cool look to it. And it got a re-release a couple years back, if I remember correctly. This is actually going under the Elite line now, which is interesting to me. Because I don't think it's really going to get Elite ranges or performance or FPS. But we'll see. Maybe they found a way to upgrade the internals. I'm not entirely certain, but we'll find out when it releases. Now, this is all speculation, of course. These very well could be doctored images if they are. These are very good. Also, these could be test mock-ups that were something they were testing or considering doing and then they never saw the day of light. So these may all be things we may never actually see. These could just be purely speculative images that are products that got nixed and we aren't going to see them in these forms. So that's important to note that these are all speculative at the moment until we get some sort of confirmation. Regardless, I think it's cool. I, I like that we're potentially getting some more options. I think that is, I think it's fun. I like, I like seeing more colors, more diversity in options for people that want to run, say, the same blaster a different way. Next up, something I am personally involved in and very excited about, and forgive me, allow me to be indulgent for a little, a little while here. Uh, those of you that have been watching the channel for a while know that I am very big on the competitive side of, well, just about everything I do, but in particular here, Nerf. So with some help from some friends, I've been developing a competitive Nerf rule set for the last three plus years, and recently, Competitive nerfing has been growing exponentially, and we're seeing game types popping up all over the place. And today, we are actually launching what is called the Blaster Tag Association. This is what my league is turning into. This is not just a single league, so we are changing from what some of you may have known as the BTL or Blaster Tag League to the Blaster Tag Association because we are bigger than one league. Uh, the website is up. The website's going to allow people to uh, host events, keep track of standings, monitor teams, rosters. Um, if things go properly, we can do stats and things like that. But before I get into the details of the website, I want to talk about the name. Like I said, association, we're bigger than one league, and that's because the goal and the focus here is to grow the competitive side of Nerf as much as we can. And to do so, I've actually reached out to a lot of the different game organizers that are pushing competitive Nerf right now, such as Quick Flag. FTT Speedball and Squad Supremacy, all of which I believe I've talked about here on the show in the past. And they have all agreed to join on board and have their game types featured on the BTA website and be a part of the Blaster Tag Association so that we can all help each other grow and, and, see, and show people that there are so many ways to play competitive nerf and so many groups out there trying to do these things and having fun seeing the team aspect inside of all of this. So all of those game types, we're going to have four game types as of launch today available on the website. And that means you can go to blastertagassociation.com right now. And on the website, you can see game types, the rules, where to find the leagues that are currently running, all of that information. And as those events happen, those standings will be input into the website and you can track standings for each league and see how a team is doing and where they are. And you can even judge up as we get more and more leagues for the same game types going. You can see where you rank nationally, internationally, things like that. That is the goal is to grow this worldwide and create the best kind of competitive nerf ecosystem that we can. And to do that, I wanted to bring in as many different groups as we could that have the goal of growing this to something great. And that is, this is something I can talk about and I will do a video separate to this going fully into all of this, but just know that is live now. Uh, you can find the website link down below, our Facebook page down below, and a Discord server down below. That's gonna allow you to know when events are going up, 
find events, find other players, and Discord channel will allow you to talk with people and easily be notified of certain things and have discussions on competitive nerf. Uh, strategies, loadouts, tactics, all those kinds of things. See what people are up to. That's the goal of growing all this and bringing people together worldwide for something amazing. So that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that because I could go on forever about this and I will in the future, but I just wanted to let you all know today that it is going live. Moving on from that, we got one other topic to talk about today, and that is something that was posted up on Facebook by uh, Hooligan Blaster Co., and these are the Bell and Wheels. These images were posted during the week along with a video. These are high serration, no concavity wheels. They are meant for stock geometry cages, which is a very interesting take on things and something that uh, is a bit different. We've been very big on concavity lately, and uh, they decided to switch things up and go high serration. And they did a test video with a bunch of different dart types. And they were averaging from the 120s to the 150s with a few peak shots, I believe, at 160. Uh, and that was all depending on dart type and weight and whatnot. So obviously, you'll see higher performance out of the lighter darts and the heavier darts generally. Uh, so this is very interesting that we have another wheel contender or wheel interest in the, uh, the hobby here. And... I may not personally be a fan of high serration wheels or any serration on my flywheels because they tend to damage darts a bit more. Uh, they have claimed that these don't damage darts all that much more than some other flywheels. So it'll be interesting to see as these get out in the hands of people how they perform and how dart wear is on things. But it's definitely something worth letting all of you know that these exist and these will be hitting the market. So go check them out if those interest you. The link will be down below as with everything. Now let's move on to the mod of the week, and that comes to us from Paul Kariakos, and this is the Moxie Boom Boom. This is a very cool Borderlands-inspired build. I believe it is inspired by the Moxie version of the crit submachine gun in the game. Uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, I think that's what it most uh, looked like, but either way, the lines on this blaster are super cool. I love the idea. I love that it just has a very unique shape and look and feel to it that I, I think is really, really nice. I think the work this guy does is really cool and he does a lot of um, like show inspired or game inspired builds. So definitely worth checking out. I've got a link down below for his uh, Reddit post on this particular build, but I also thought, you know what? Let's just make this the video of the week as well because he actually has a four part build log for this pla uh, blaster and this project in general. And I think that's really, really cool that you get to see the process of this blaster being created from beginning to end and seeing it firing at the end, which is definitely cool because he's gone ahead and made it a back loading magazine uh, port rather than that side load that the, the Zeus generally has. So there's definitely some improvements and I think really, really cool. So that should be both the mod and the video of the week. So go check that out. You can do that by clicking right over here because we are now at the end of the episode. Let me know what you think of everything. Uh, the new blaster repaints, uh, the BTA launch, competitive nerf. I'm really, of course, interested about that. Uh, the new hooligan wheels, and of course, the mod of the week. Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more in the future. We do weekly news every Saturday morning, gameplay and reviews as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.